everybody, welcome back to Drug Talk. As always, I'm your host, Garrett Campbell. Today we're going to be discussing the medication known as clonidine. Its brand name is Catapress. Now, before I talk about the medication itself, just keep in mind that this channel is for information purposes only and not to be used as a source for recommendations for your personal health care. And quickly, if at any time during this video you find the information to be valuable, please consider leaving a like on the video as it really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. So first, what will we cover in this presentation? We're going to start by talking about how clonidine works, then we'll touch on indications or reasons this medication will be prescribed to patients, we'll talk about contraindications or reasons we could not prescribe this medication to a patient, then we'll touch on examples of dosing, and then stick around to the end where we'll talk about side effects with percentages. So how does clonidine work? Well, it stimulates alpha-2 adrenergic receptors in the brain. This results in reduced sympathetic outflow from the central nervous system and decreased peripheral resistance, renal vascular resistance, heart rate, and blood pressure. So when would we see clonidine be prescribed to patients? We often see this medication prescribed in hypertension or high blood pressure. We see it used as an adjunct therapy or add-on therapy in cancer pain. And we also see it used to treat attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or ADHD. Now for contraindications or reasons we would not be able to prescribe clonidine to a patient. So first off would be if a patient had a hypersensitivity or allergy to clonidine or any other component of the formulation. As well, it would not be able to be used with anticoagulation therapy. Also, this medication cannot be given uh, epidurally above C4 dermatome. And lastly here, this medication could not be used if the injection site is infected. Now for examples of dosing with clonidine, so in hypertension we may see an initial dose of 0.1 milligrams given orally twice daily in the morning and at bedtime, and then this dose could be increased by 0.1 milligrams per day each week. The usual dose would be 0.2 to 0.6 daily in two divided doses. When used as an adjunct in cancer pain, we may initially give 30 micrograms per hour as a continuous epidural infusion. This dose may be increased or decreased based on response. Now, as with all medications, there are some side effects or adverse reactions that patients may experience while using clonidine, so I'll go over some of those here now. So hypotension, or low blood pressure, may happen up to 45% of the time, and orthostatic hypotension, which would be a sudden drop in blood pressure when going from a seated to a standing position, may happen about 32% of the time. 1-5% to of patients may experience an increase in their body temperature, and 1-10% to may experience constipation. Nausea may happen in 5-8% to of patients, and 6-8% to of patients may experience a pain in their throat. 12 to 20 percent may experience upper abdominal pain and xerostomia or dry mouth comes in between 5 and 40 percent of the time. 13 percent of patients may experience confusion and dizziness may happen 3 to 16 percent of the time. Insomnia comes in at a rate between 4 and 6 percent and 10 percent of patients may experience sedation. Up to 38 percent may experience somnolence and 6 to 9 percent may experience irritability. 3 to 9 percent may experience nightmares, and fatigue can happen 13 to 16 percent of the time. That's all we're going to talk about today with clonidine or catapress. As always, I'm very thankful you took the time to go by and watch one of my videos. If you found the information valuable and you'd like to help grow this channel, you can like the videos, share the videos, or most importantly, subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's also some links in the description you can check out as well. That's it for today. Take care.